I wanted to start this program with a little bit of a dedicated reading to our friends at CSIS. Um, it's uh, referring to NIST's 9-11 um, Commission, and it's referring to NC Star 1. Uh, the title is Federal Building and Fire Safety Investigation of the World Trade Center Disaster, Final Report on the Collapse of the World Trade Center Towers. Now, the reading that I want to uh, dedicate and, uh, and read from is taken from Catherine Fletcher. She's a representative at NIST, and uh, it was a letter from her to Dr. Wood. Uh, it was a response, um, and here's the quote. As stated in NC Star 1, NIST only investigated the factors leading up to the initiation of the collapses of the WTC towers and not the collapses them this, themselves. So that, that's pretty profound. Uh, they, here you have a representative from NIST that is telling us that they didn't investigate the collapses. Uh, weren't they paid 15 to $20 million for those, uh, I believe? Uh, maybe my guest, Andrew Johnson, will have a little bit more enlightenment on that issue. Hey, hello, Andrew. How are you doing today? I'm uh, fine, uh, thanks, and, uh, Mike, and uh, thanks for inviting me back uh, onto, onto the podcast. So how about that little reading there? That's uh, that's pretty eye-opening, right? Because everybody, well, no, go to the 9-11 Commission. They always refer to it. And then you, you could even say, hey, well, why not stop there? Why not go into the specific part that del deals with the quote-unquote collapses? And uh, But then you have this curious statement from Catherine Fletcher. I don't know if you could misconstrue that to mean anything else other than what's there. Yeah, it is It is very strange. I mean, when, when we came across that, you know, when we got that letter, um, I think back in 2007 or 2008, I uh, can't remember the exact date on that without going to refer to the actual document, it was, um, you know, quite a surprise because it was essentially an, an admission of fraud on its face because the title of the report was The Collapse of the World Trade Center Towers. That was the name of the report for which the request for correction was filed. So that statement right there that you read out, those couple of sentences was, you know, we didn't investigate the actual collapse, only the events up to the collapse. Well, the report then should have been titled the events up to the collapse of the World Trade Center Towers and investigation thereof, you know. So... so Oh, it's it's funny too because it's not only not the collapses or the collapses aren't investigated. The uh, where is it? The initiation isn't investigated, but the factors leading to initiation. So what what does that even mean? <laughs> well, in, indeed, it's like oh well, actually, you know, we didn't do anything really. We just kind of you know we're, we're saying that planes crashed and the buildings came down because of the weight. And that's basically it. And, you know, that's that's your $16 million spent. <laughs> Thank you very much, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, and a few a few private companies went ka-ching, you know. And uh, that was that, basically. Um, but at least, at the very least, I suppose, being a, bit, a little bit less cynical, those documents, the 10,000 pages of NIST reports, which you can download, they are publicly available, as I've said before in a couple of other interviews, they, they do contain a lot of information. And so you can use them to do your own investigation, essentially, which is essentially what Dr. Judy Wood did. Uh, she used a lot of that data in her own investigation. And thereby, you know, you do allegedly have some reliability to that data. You know, it can't all be hope wrong. At least, even if the conclusions are wrong, the data can be still totally valid. Um, so that there is that to consider, of course, and um, and, that, and that's what she did. And we we thought that people like Catherine Fletcher were actually kind of because that was such a ridiculous statement. Really, the one I the one that you read out it's kind of ridiculous when you can stop to consider it because it is so ridiculous. You have to wonder if it's kind of like. Um, covering something else up in terms of, well, look, I'm sorry, Dr. Wood, but we've done all we can do here. We know basically that, you know, you are right, but um, my hands are tied. You know, if I was to do anything about this and speak out, it would be career suicide, et cetera, et cetera, or worse even, you know, and therefore uh, we can't do anything. Sorry, you know, but his, I'm going to say something ridiculous so that people can read between the lines of what I'm saying and, and work out, you know, what it means. 
So, absolutely. In a way, I guess Catherine either knowingly or unknowingly helped us all out. And just to mention, too, that all the stuff about the court cases, the RFC, the Key Tam case, you can get it on Dr. Wood's site. But uh, the link that you provide on your site is right from the office of, of the Chief Information Officer uh, for the Department of Commerce. So, this is a .gov site. This is legit. They're posting it there. There's no secret about it. It's, see, it's not, it's, it's I guess, the secrets, if you keep them <clears throat> in plain sight, I guess it works a lot better than just trying to hide it all the time, right? Right, right. You know, and uh, those documents, they, they are all there still. Um, last time I shared the links I had didn't work because they'd moved, reorganised the site. And I know there was also later the report done on building number seven where they had a public consultation, kind of. And originally when that was done, I think in... Oh, gosh, 2009, 2008. Is that where Jerry Lee part went in? Uh, well, he went in, I think, uh, and made comments for both the original uh, NC Star 1, which was mm -hmm. the report on the collapse of Towers 1 and 2, or alleged collapse, I should say. The title. Destruction. Yeah. <laughs> the title, yeah. yeah. But then they also did a report, separate report on building number 7, which came out, I think, about two years or well, three, even three mm -hmm. years later, I think in two, I can't remember that came out in 2007 or 2008. It was delayed a lot, and I and I remember that the truth mm. movement often was like, oh, they're, you know, they're trying to hide, they won't give us this report, they won't give us this report. Uh, so I, I remember kind of finding out about that way that they hadn't uh, released it right away. And um, I mean, I don't really have a comment on that because I, I'm not there in the administration part of uh, NIST or whoever's doing this, so. I think, the, you know, there was this sense, well, I mean, we followed that f fairly closely, there was this sense that they were stalling mm -hmm. a bit. I think, obviously, from their, you know, area of the playing field, so to speak, they were trying to make it as good as they could make it, as convincing as they could make it. Um, you know, but what, what I was just mentioning about the documents was there was a number of public comments were posted by people like Kevin Ryan... Uh, and I think um, uh, there were a couple of other people that, that, that posted comments as well that, are, that were well known in the so-called truth movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but then all those document, all those documents have now been collated into a single document, and NIST have actually got this big, massive, long, two hundred and fifty-page document or something, which has got all the public comments in one document, which uh, was they were all split out before. So they did. I mean, that's not particularly interesting to people. I just thought it was interesting that they. Actually merge these all together in some uh, time since I last looked um, but the, yeah they haven't really tried to hide anything in particular in that way they haven't like hidden the report and like I say the report itself does contain a lot of uh, valuable information it's just that the, um, the conclusions are obviously you know hopelessly wrong well, that's a big thing we found out that uh, through, I believe it was through one of Dr. Wood's responses or letters about this uh, court, about these court cases, was that um, they, I think it was Catherine Fletcher or another representative, they actually said, now don't quote me exactly, but the uh, the contractors were hired to uh, give the data and not interpret it. And that was NIST jobs to interpret the data. And uh, we later found out that interpreting data wrong is not illegal. What would be illegal is putting incorrect data in. So and most of the data, as far as I mean, I can tell, is correct in these 9-11 commission in the NC Star 1 and any of the other reports. But it's the interpretations based on those data that you're kind of like, whoa, what's going on? And the average Joe, how are they going to understand numbers in the graph, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, this is it. And, and so they were trying to sort of argue it on technicalities like that. Uh, and it, it was very surprising. Again, another surprising statement that you highlighted there that, yeah, they said, yeah, they, we just asked them to collect these reports, but we were going to have the kind of, uh, you know, interpretation of that. I mean, it's, again, it's kind of just ridiculous, really, that, 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 that these firms like Applied Research Associates that, you know, have these huge government contracts uh, in, in, from the Department of Defence, you know, they must have well-qualified people. They're not just going to supply tables of data, you know, or they shouldn't be just doing that. You know, it's 
the notion of that is just silly, really. It's a scapegoat um, because then NIST could say, yeah. well, they were in the contract. They're not allowed to interpret it. You just give us the raw data. So then it's a way out for ARA. They don't have to answer anything. And we saw how the court case went. It just gets dismissed. It doesn't even get its chance. Uh, so ARA really is not under fire. Uh, neither is SAIC. And one that I always, uh, when I started looking into the contracts too, was Leslie Robertson, the uh, structural engineers that um, that built the building. Uh, there was there. I figured it out. It's it's rough math, so don't don't mark my words. But it was about 5,700 of those uh, prefabrication unit, the wheat checks, should have been uh, present at the site. Shouldn't Leslie Roberts have been? Hmm, we're missing quite 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 a bit you know there uh, that didn't go across their mind but then again you realize that okay they're allowed to provide data but they're not allowed that's an interpretation and that's this job to interpret it right right and i mean uh, as i recall you know we were arguing that this was you know negligence it was negligence of th those obvious facts basically like the one you highlighted there and many many similar ones you know and i remember uh, creating a list uh, going through, I think we went through the original contracts which were posted, and then we listed the reasons why those those contracts haven't been, you know, fulfilled basically by these companies, and that was obviously the basis for the data quality submission. You know that they they'd not met, um, you know, I mean from an engineering perspective, you know, we 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 talk in terms of user requirements, and if you develop a, a system. Then you have user requirements for that development. You know, you have a paying customer somewhere, and then you have an acceptance test, whereby you determine whether that uh, what you deliver meets the requirements, and that's essentially what what those contracts were drawn up for. You know, user requirements, and then you know has it met the user requirements? I mean, we could clearly illustrate that they had not met the user requirements, yet they were still signed off as being a valid report. No, um, fraud. So fraud. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's well, what, that's exactly what even it was. the underwriters laboratory thing where they made the mock ups of the floors, they burnt them at twice the heat for twice as long, couldn't get them to fail, and then yet they signed off on the report saying that it they failed or that the test was conclusive or uh, mind blowing when you actually look into it. But again, the average person is gonna look into it. So I'm just waiting to say something about the destruction of the complex and someone say, Oh, haven't you read the nine eleven commission? I was like I say, Yes, I've looked into it. Have you read NC Star One? Have you read the title? Have you heard what Catherine Fletcher has to say about it. Have you looked into any of the court cases having to do with it? And I mean, that's going to shut them up because the average person, they're lucky if they know the phrase 9-11 commission, you know? Usually it's just, didn't the government investigate that? Exactly. And, uh, you know, very few people are familiar with uh, NIST anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think I've done one interview where I've said, uh, you know, said NIST and, and people have like nodded their head or, you know, said, oh, yeah, that's the National Institute for Standards and Technology, isn't it? And I've gone, yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't, I don't think I've ever, I've ever said that. You know, you're probably one of the few people that's done interviews who actually know, you know, what NIST is and what its role was, you know, mm -hmm. broadly speaking or even in detail, you know. Th uh, this is critical. Heard of it. This part's really critical because, again, people that you see 9 11, 9 11 wasn't such a job, 9 11 wasn't so we demand a new investigation. Well, shouldn't we look before we before we even do anything? Can't we just look at what's already there, look at the quality of it, look at how it was conducted, look at who conducted it? What just take in all the information, even if you can't sense, uh, sort it? And I mean, there's so much to look over, and I've just hit the tip of the iceberg, but even I've found stuff that would make me say, hey, 15 to 20 million dollars. When Dr. Morgan Reynolds were on and we were kind of just joking, I was like, wow, could you imagine what Dr. Wood could do with an investigation with that kind of budget? You know, it's just, it's it's crazy. 15 yeah, to 20 yeah. million just spent on nothing, on a bunch of uh, wrongly yeah. interpreted data, a bunch of, uh, uh, the actual 9-11 commission must be just the stack. Like like the book itself, I've rented it from the library and uh, it's a sleeping pill. It's, it's all, it's very dry. It's all technical stuff, a lot about who was here when this was there and stuff like that. Not really relevant to the buildings coming down you if you actually want to look into it it's nc star one look through that and you're going to be shocked because there's stuff there that's going to make you scratch your head i can't quote anything it's not right in front of me and even if it was it's no. it's really long so so um yeah 10,000 pages yeah oh yeah 10,000 pages and uh 
it's yeah, so for the, whole, for the whole, I mean, it's split into sections, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 crazy, and that's ten thousand pages split up between seven. Was it seven reports or or something like that? Ace? Something like that. I can't I can't remember the exact number, mm -hmm. but I think I think it was basically. So it might have been more than that because I think it was basically. One report per contractor, mm -hmm. and I think there were 23 contractors, oh, so okay. there, there may be sort of 23 sub-reports mm -hmm. within that 10,000 pages, um, it would be my guess. So, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a monster, it really is.